Hey everyone, welcome back. Day 20, and let's see. So, if you're new to this channel, I'm dropping out of my PhD in six months, June 2024. And so far, up to this point, I've built a project management and task management system. And now I'm sort of in the process. Oh, so after I made after I made that system, I made also the decision that I am going to drop out. I've been saying it with like 98, 99% certainty, but there was part of me that wanted to do a little bit more, uh, more analysis and make sure it was the right decision. So I did that and it ended up showing that dropping out was the best path for me based on uh, maybe finances aren't the best. There's always a lot of risk, um, but based on sort of what I'm looking for in my future path, it's the best option and this was compared to uh, continuing my PhD and then trying to spin off uh, my research or going straight into industry like Amazon or Nvidia or even uh, continuing my PhD and then going into industry in machine learning or AI or something like that. So now that I've got that out of the way, the plan now is to start planning, start making a uh, a strategy on how I'm going to get to 5k in passive income and so I actually have a slight detour that may seem good may seem bad uh, I hope it's not like paralysis through analysis I'm just procrastinating um, and it can be a little bit but at the same time I think it's all useful to have sort of a clear headspace it's something that I've needed for quite a bit of time uh, I've been used to being on the go, go, go. Now I kind of want to uh, put some thought into my decisions. And I'll actually get into that sort of thinking about making decisions and approaching problems like this. When, when are you thinking too much versus when should you take action? Um, yeah, let's get into it. So... This is sort of my outline, what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, it'll be a quick video because I do have a lot of things to do, a lot of things to work on, um, and I can't uh, record it because some of those things are private information I don't want to share, or uh, yeah, just stuff I I would be better to not record. So outline video let's see the tasks I worked on so far so this is where I I'm, it's a bit of a detour but not necessarily I think it's it's building from the ground up and just making sure that my approach is solid and that uh, that I have a productive start that I set myself up to be productive and efficient so the thing that I've been working on is system maintenance so what is that so for me that's been this thing on the left so far purchased an ssd drive very large very quick and transferred all my files from my mac from thumb drives from other drives i i have lots of drives lots of uh, files on my mac that are stored in various places all over the place unorganized and what i want to do is have a clear workflow what goes where uh, have a clear schedule for when I'm backing up my Mac so I have uh, version some sort of version control going on and some redundant redundancies to uh, protect information and make sure that I don't lose anything so after I did that backed up my Mac with one of my drives at this point I have a, n a number of drives that I'm using and then factory resetted my Mac. So this is starting from fresh. I literally did this yesterday night. And yeah, all this was like in the span of one or two days. I didn't even like take the time to make sure everything was fine. I just transferred what I needed and everything else was all, I'll pick it up from my backup if I need to. Otherwise it's just things that I'll, I'll re-figure on the way. And so now my plan is to explore a lot of the uh, the settings on the Mac and the built-in software. I really want to uh, make sure that I 
explore and and understand what the Mac is capable of, how can I be secure in whatever I'm doing and um, and just have like a productive start. So that's exploring some of the key utilities such as Activity Monitor. I've used it briefly on occasions um, to see what's taking up resources, what's consuming a lot of the power when I need to, but um, beyond that, I'm not too familiar with it. And that's something that I wanna be familiar with. I wanna be familiar with the shortcuts on my Mac. I want to, now that I have an extra drive, regularly backup my Mac. I want to see if I can play around with a audio MIDI setup and maybe have some cool YouTube audio recordings. Uh, still deciding on that, uh, but we'll see. And then, yeah, just see what is available and see how I can explore or how can I set up my, uh, my Mac to be the most productive going forward. And then after that, downloading whatever software I previously had. I don't want to go further than what the Mac already has to offer. I know there's so many uh, softwares, productivity softwares out there. I'm good with all that. What I really just want is how can I set up a solid base? So it, it, there is some, uh, what can seem like procrastination, but I am sort of limiting where I'm drawing a line, where I'm exploring. So in that, in that process, setting up hotkeys, uh, setting up hotkeys for my Mac, but also making sure that they align with the hotkeys on my project management system. So this is Obsidian, if you're not familiar, it's just a note taking app, but you can customize it to make it do what I use it for. And I do have a video on that. So set up hotkeys, set up a folder file structure. And this just means how am I gonna store the different projects, the different files that I'm using on my Mac and not just on my Mac, but also on my drives. And yeah, and really the main point of this is that I do have a lot of files and folders and things that have been haphazard for the past seven years that I've been studying. Really, I've been on the go. I've had, I've always been doing something. I've never not just had time to lounge around and, and had, have leisure. I have. There have been times where I mean I procrastinate uh, by watching videos, but it, YouTube videos, Netflix movies, whatever, uh, but not that much, not often. And yeah, so really hone in on a system that I can work with my projects um, and organize everything. So I do have lots of files and come up with a maintenance encryption plan. So whatever files I do have, what needs to be maintained, make sure I regularly uh, make follow my system, the setup that I have, and then also what files do I need to encrypt and make sure that this is secure. So let's see. That's overall my next goal and really the reasoning for it again is i have lots of links lots of books resources that i need to go through and these links re books resources are relevant not all of them but a lot of them are relevant to my plan for how am i going to get to 5k in passive income so just showing you like a brief what i'm talking about I have a Excel sheet organized by Dewey Decimal. So zero is zero, zero, zero. One is 100s, two is 200s, all the way to 900s. Zero, I believe, corresponds to like uh, computer science, general works, documentation. So any articles, any YouTube videos, any resources that I've, um, that's a URL that I have run a, come across in the past seven years, I've put in this uh, Excel tab. And then I think one might be religion or psychology, or that was two, three is social, uh, social sciences, I think, social stuff related to social, so finance is there as well. Uh, five, I think, is math and the natural sciences. 
And then six, this is where technology and business comes in. So I have saved a lot of uh, links on general, let's say like ideas that I wanna explore, con uh, videos, uh, people that have like a great story on in entrepreneurship. So for example, Elon Musk, how did he go from uh, starting PayPal? How did he even sell that for millions? How did he then use that knowing nothing to start an electric car company? And then how did he, well, I don't know if he was one of the persons that started Tesla, but my point being, how did he sequence his steps and in the proper way and how did he approach each such that he is where he is and that's something i'm i want to explore and it won't be necessarily that i have to understand that before i start taking action it's just i need to prioritize what is useful to set up an overall plan and then in that in that process i'll have like tiny steps that i can work on now so i might make some maps initially that i'll um, be sharing and trying to make some the 5k in passive income but then how do I set up that to be long term how I don't just want to make apps forever I want to go from making an app to maybe well it might be a couple apps making a few apps to then working on a, a service that has apps and websites that provide some use to humans and then from there I don't know starting some hardware or some physical product company it's a sequence that i really want to explore um, and i'm not sure what it's going to be but that's why i need to organize my stuff first so that's a bunch yeah a bunch of links books resources and the way i thought about this was one i could dive in head first just make apps and it just ignore all of these resources just completely ignore them the only thing i'm going to think about is how what is the next step i take from here so what app do i make now what do i have to learn for that app and how do i share it how do i make money from that that's one strategy the next strategy is well there are apps that are lev that have leveraged the way that the approach that people have taken to build that specific app puts them in a position where they're earning millions, where it's not just an app, but it's also their way into um, to incubators, to y, YC, com, YC Combinator? Y Combinator? I don't even remember the name, but uh, yeah, people have applied to incubators and accelerators and their app is a startup and they have gotten funding and their app makes millions so that's that's sort of another strategy where with some foresight i can approach developing apps in a way where i can make more i can leverage it to go into accelerators incubators and it's not just an app it's an actual startup versus I'm just gonna push out as many apps as I can. You can call them startups, but they're not necessarily startups. They're just apps. They're, they're, they're just apps. <laughs> and so I want to have some foresight and focus on the apps with more impact. And initially it might be that I'm making apps that fulfill my own needs, things that I personally would use um, just because that's easiest. Um, I'm my own customer and I can, um, I know my demographic. I know who would want to use these apps, but the goal is to have some foresight. So that's really the, the reason for trying to organize my books and, and resources, links, articles, PDFs that I, that I've saved over the past seven years. And then in addition to that, my life isn't just, isn't just, uh, isn't just this. It's not just recording in March of startup. I'm still in my PhD. I am a TA for a class. So there, there are other commitments and, 
part of being a PhD student is the research I'm doing for the healthcare project that, that I'm working on. And then also another project. And the second project I can share, my first healthcare one, I'll share aspects of it within certain videos that I've edited and maybe scripted. Um, but I, I don't think I can share it because it's, uh, it's something that, that we patented or we're going to patent. So uh, yeah, that one I'll restrict. But this one, chest radiology report generation. This one's essentially using uh, chest radiology. So people are taking CT scans or MRI, MRI scans of the lungs and detecting uh, issues in the lungs and then using large language models, sort of like ChatGPT, to detect, uh, to classify the lungs. Is, is there some sort of issue and detect where uh, in the photo highlight it or segment it uh, and show what's wrong. And so this can help. Oh, and then also write a report on this automatically. So this is something interesting that isn't patented that I don't know anything about, but I'm gonna dive in and I'm doing it with the aim to publish a paper with another research student. So this I can show. And then I'm gonna show this on my second YouTube channel. The aim of my second channel is really gonna be to uh, show things I'm learning, things that I necessarily can't make a video on this channel because the aim of this channel is more so March to startup. How do I get to a startup? But all the learnings, things that are purely, I need to learn how to do this. It might not be connected to an app or anything. Uh, for example, PyTorch or um, how to do a literature review. Let's see, how to make websites. I need to learn Android app development. So these are all things I'm gonna be recording on the second channel, just aimed for learning. I'll be reading books and just sharing the learnings I have there. Maybe I'm watching YouTube videos or listening to podcasts and I'll record myself. And as, as I'm listening to that, writing down the key learnings that I've had for each. And so you can walk with me through those resources. So that's my second channel. And what's my goal for this channel? I sort of went over it, but for the next two weeks, two to four weeks, while I'm focused primarily on ramping up for this project, uh, the PhD student said he, he'd expect four weeks max to ramp up to his project if I wanna contribute. So that's gonna be my focus, trying to get caught up there. And so in that process, I don't, I don't know how much time I'll have for this project or for this YouTube channel for March to start up. Um, but I will try to dedicate at least an hour every day. And that plan will be exploring the settings, software built into the Mac, come up with my guide with a guide on how I'm using it. And you can reference it if you have a Mac, if you have Windows, you might have to look for similar software if you like my setup. Otherwise, just use that as an inspiration on how you might approach setting up your own systems and organizing all your files and, and really being more productive with the tools that you have. Um, so setting up hotkeys, finalizing my workflow, so how I'm using all my different devices and uh, managing my projects how I'm organizing the files and folders, and then what tools. I'm gonna to show what softwares, what apps, what uh, physical tools like keyboard, mouse, what my setup is. So I'm gonna share that with you. So I'll probably document that, make a video, uh, and then come up with a plan to organize all these different links I have. So I did mention I have, each of these has over, let's say, a minimum of 200 links. I know on this uh, tab, I have probably like 600 to 900 links that I need to or go through and then organize what is no longer relevant, what is still useful, um, what's just outdated. So organize that, come up with a maintenance plan 
uh, when do I back up stuff? When, when do I need to go through my files and just see that I'm still following my system? Come up with an encryption plan? What um, softwares am I using to encrypt my, what files and where I'm storing those files? This I'm not necessarily gonna share. I am gonna share what tools I've used. And I am gonna, yeah, I'm gonna share what tools I've used. So you might find those useful. For this, I might record just myself. So if I record myself, it'll probably be like this, just studying. Uh, I'm not sure though, that's kind of boring. So we'll see. And then, yeah, so although I can't share this, I can, for example, at the end of every day, once I've spent like an hour, two hours, organizing whatever files I have, I can, once I'm done, share like a five minute, this is what I've been doing. And this is sort of an, or, an organized curated list of, of links and YouTube channels that are useful that I'm gonna go through. And so maybe if you wanna get, if you wanna go ahead, and look at that, look at some of the resources I'm, I'll be using. You can make your own plan. Um, yeah, that I can show. So the primary goal of this is, and so I, I think I didn't speak to this enough, but I there are really like two purposes for documenting my journey. First is like, it's, it's a story. Everyone likes stories. It's a story I'd want to have available to my kids. I want them to see that it's possible how you go from step A to step B, well not step B, but like step C, and what tasks, what uh, what sort of uh, schedule, what discipline, what uh, at personality characteristics, I don't know, what things you need to get there, and so it serves as a story but then also it serves as an example, something that you can follow along with and reference. And maybe you're stuck on something, so then uh, this is helpful. If you're on a similar journey or maybe there's parts where there's intersects that this is useful for you. Um, yeah, and I think eventually when this channel gets big enough, I probably have like Q and A's like once a month. Um, what is it like clubhouse is that a thing where people just have conversations so just a way to interact and and because your journey might not be exactly like mine so maybe you need some extra brains just one just thinking about um, how to approach your own journey or if you are following something similar what uh, maybe you have questions so it'll be cool to have something like that. I do have a Discord, you can join that. Right now it's not popping yet, but it will be eventually. So, um, yeah. I think that's it for this, this video. I'll probably record me going into the report generation. Oh, you can't see that. So I'll probably record this today, starting a literature review. How do I find the five key papers that I need, and then starting to review the Mimic CR CXR dataset paper, and then probably tomorrow or the next few days, going through a PyTorch bootcamp. So just <laughs> just looking through like twenty four hour YouTube videos and and learning PyTorch. So that's that's gonna be what's going on in that channel. See y'all tomorrow.